and welcome to my channel Inch by Inch Art. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this cloth mache dragon head mount. This piece of particle board is my backer and I'm going to be using a balloon to make a paper mache inner core for the head. PVA glue is a main component of this entire piece and whenever I do mache I mix PVA glue with water. Some people like to mix in other things when they make mache mixes but I just stick with the PVA and water. Once my balloon is covered, I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to make another piece of paper mache that sticks out further from the balloon. This is going to be the snout of the dragon. I'm just going to roll up a piece of paper real tight, tape it, and then cover it in paper mache. This just gives it an inner core for its shape and will be removed once I cut it open and it's dry. While I'm cutting these pieces open, I'm thinking about the shape that I want the dragon head to be. This is going to be the mouth, so I'm not going to cut it straight. I'm going to cut it jagged or angled and try to keep each side symmetrical. Here I am removing that paper core I was talking about before. Now it's time to start fitting my pieces together. This isn't the entire head of the dragon, remember this is just the mouth area, so there's going to be a lot of building up around this as we go. And as I go along, I keep testing the head against the mount board just because I need to think about how to build up the rest of it as it's going to be coming out of the board. And here I'm just adding some pieces of cardboard to build up other areas of the head and neck.
Now it's time to start some of our cloth mache. It's easiest to do the inside of the mouth before you move on to anything else, just because it's the hardest area to reach. You could do this as separate pieces before you connect the whole head together. I just decided since its mouth was pretty wide open that I could do it this way. So I'm taking a piece of thin sheet and I'm soaking it in PVA glue with a little bit of water and then putting it into the mouth. Now that I've got the inside of my mouth done, I'm just bulking up a bit of the head. This is a type of paper fiber mache that I made. It's actually just ground up egg cartons. So I just cleaned them by boiling them and then shredded them really fine and then mixed them with PVA glue. When it's dry, it's rock hard. It can be a little crumbly, but if it's crumbly, just add more PVA glue. I'm using this to fill out the back of the skull and make a base where the horns will fit in. Now you can see the inside of the mouth is dry and that top crown bit I've made is dry. So I'm just going to move on to painting the inside of the mouth because this is going to be the easiest time to do so. I'm just using acrylic paint, squirting some inside and using a brush to spread it around as well as I can in the, all of the nooks and crannies. Once the base red is dry for inside the mouth, I'm going to do a black wash. This will just give the mouth a lot more depth and make it not look as bright and clean. And now I'm going to quickly show you how I made the teeth. I'm using some Sculpey 3 translucent and I'm just shaping the teeth with my fingers. I'll bake these according to the instructions so that they're already hardened before I do anything else. And here in my little case are my teeth and my eyes. I have another video where I show how I make eyes. I make a dragon eye pendant with these cabochons. If anyone would like to check that out, I have a link here. I'm just using hot glue to attach the teeth and putting them wherever I want them. And same as for with the teeth, I'm just going to hot glue in my eyes where I want them in the eye socket area that I had built up earlier.
now onto the majority of our cloth mache. Here you can see what my sheet looks like. It's just a really thin old kids sheet that I got at a hospice shop for a dollar. So good reusing of materials. I just cut it up into strips, put it in my glue mix, and I'm going to wrap each tooth to make it have gums and hide that hot glue that I use to secure them on. This will also help hold them in place if they ever get bumped, they're less likely to break or fall off. I've securely wrapped each tooth. I also decided that I wanted to put that little uh, cheek membrane that you usually see on uh, dragons and some reptiles. I think alligators have it as well. I just like it. It makes the mouth look a little more detailed. I'm gonna go around and add a gum line. Now to build our tongue. So I'm just going to take some of this aluminum wire and check with my mount to figure out how long I want it to be. Then I'm going to cut three pieces of wire that are all the same length, put them into my drill, and while holding the other end, I'm going to spin them so that they're tightly twined together. This just makes it a thicker, stronger wire without me having to go to the store or buy a big, thick wire. my wires are twisted together, I'm bending it into the shape that I want and then wrapping the wire in tin foil. It's essentially an armature for the tongue. There's lots of different ways you could do this. I could have just used more cloth mache, but I decided to just use masking tape on the tin foil. I use the masking tape only because it's paintable and I wouldn't be able to easily paint the tin foil itself. Now I'm just using an X-Acto knife to punch a small hole in the back of the mouth that I'll be able to put the wire for the tongue through. Now I'm back to just building up more of the head again, adding more paper and cardboard, taping it down or hot gluing it down wherever I want it until I get a shape I'm happy with.
now I'm just gonna cut up an old hanger and use the pieces for areas that I need spikes or reinforce straight pieces to make certain features. So the first bit I'm doing is the sort of, I guess, ear is the easiest way to explain it. And then I'm gonna have a row of spikes that go down the center of the head and the neck that I'm going to be adding fabric to to make fins on it. So it's gonna have like a sail down the middle and it's going to have wing type ears, like bat ears on the sides, bat, bat wing ears. I don't know how to describe it. A lot of this was actually inspired by the basilisk lizard. Now that all the core pieces are done, I'm just doing some painting again. I need to hit with paint everything that I added around the mouth, so all the cloth mache. It's just easier to do it this way because the more you add to it, the harder it is to reach inside. And here you can see I've painted the tongue purple and I'm ready to put it in. I'm just using hot glue in that hole that I sliced before and pressing it in. Now I'm gonna build up those ear spikes. I don't want it to be thin pieces of wire that you can see through the fabric, so I decided to beef them up a bit with some newspaper and tape. And I'm doing the same to the spike on the top, just in the front for the sail, because it'll be a bit more visible than the others. And here I have a horn that I made using this Norsky epoxy filler. I had it left over from a dragon I'd made previously. This is just the first one I've ever videoed, so I need to make a mate for it. I'm just gonna cut up a piece of cardboard to match the approximate size, bulk it up with more cardboard and newspaper using masking tape to pull it all together. And then once it's about the same size as the older one that I'm trying to match, I'm going to mix the A and B parts together per the instructions and coat the horn. And I just slather it on like it's peanut butter using some popsicle sticks and then I rest it in a cardboard container to just sort of prop it up. I'm 
while the horn is curing, I'm going to go back and work on my cloth mache some more. To help with securing the cloth mache to the mount, I'm going to cover it with my PVA water mixture and then take my cloth and dip it into this PVA water mixture, wring it out so it's not dripping everywhere, and then place it onto the areas that I've already coated on the mount. This is essentially going to be the skin, though it does also add some rigidity to the piece. It's a really nice effect and I like how it looks. Now back to my horn, you can see that it's cured. It does stick a little bit to the cardboard, but it's not a big deal. I can peel and scrape it off. As it continues to cure, it'll get a lot harder, so I just want to do this while it's slightly tacky. I'm going to sand it down a little bit to make it smooth, and then start to figure out the placement on the dragon. I use hot glue in those holes that I made previously, and just wedge the horns in there as tight as I can. And here I am adding that cool top sail. I really liked how this worked out. I didn't do this on my first dragon and I was nervous that it was going to look silly, but I think it came out pretty good. And same as before, every time I'm adding the cloth mache, I'm painting on the PVA and water mixture first and then dipping the cloth in that mixture so that it's nice and saturated and then placing it onto the piece where I want it. And now moving on to securing it to the base. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but I decided that I wanted to have a wooden block, which meant that I had to add a wooden block into the neck area. So I'm just making a cardboard template grabbing a chunk of wood and tracing it onto the wood so that I know where to cut. This way I have a nice sturdy piece of wood that I can just put right into the neck and adjust it how I want to get the angle of the head that I want on the mount. I'm just using hot glue around the inside and the edge as I push the wood block into the neck. Now I'm going to do a bit of trimming. I decided that I wanted the sail on the neck and the flaps on the ears to be a bit more jagged and pointy. So I'm just using this box cutter to trim the cured cloth mache to get the shape that I want. Now I'm marking on the base where the neck is going to be so that I can drill screws in from the back side that will come through into the back of the dragon head. And I'm just pre-drilling my holes so that it's easier for my screws. And once I've got that all screwed on, it's really firm and sturdy on the base. Now 
now that it's on the base, I noticed that there's a little bit of a gap where you could see a bit of the wood, so I'm just making a bit of a collar with cloth mache to make sure that it matches up to the base. So for the next level of detail, I'm going to do some air dry clay. This is to hide blemishes that might be visible where the cloth is torn or didn't fully cover or wasn't wrinkled quite where I wanted it or if I just wanted to add other little details. So for the base of the horns, I've created these little structures that the horns are growing out of rather than it just being skin. I am adding these little scales, I guess, <laughs> little sections of bubbly scales. I just thought it was an interesting detail to add and would be fun. I'm cleaning up the nose a bit to give it a little bit of a beak look, and I'm adding some areas to emphasize certain things. So like, I'm going to add wrinkles to the top of the snout that make it look more like it's snarling. felt like the cloth mache did show the snarl, but that the air dry clay accentuated it. And for tools, I'm using wooden sculpting tools, silicon sculpting tools, and my favorite tool, my fingers. and I decided to add some little spikes above the brow ridge. Once all the air dry clay is dry, it's really important to seal it before you paint it. If you don't seal it with something, it'll actually re-wet from the paint itself and you'll have it start to fall off or change in shape, which you don't want. So I just paint on a thick layer of PVA glue and that locks it so that you can paint without a problem. And I've got some Citadel black spray paint that I'm going to be using as a base coat. But before I take it outside, I just need to protect the areas that I don't want painted. So I'm using some blue tack to cover the eyes. And then I'm going to use masking tape and newspaper to fill and protect the mouth, teeth, and tongue. Now that the black base coat is done, it's time to get into the actual painting, and this is where it's going to start to really look good. I think it actually looked kind of cool black, but I was trying to make a green dragon, so maybe I'll make a black dragon sometime soon. So the majority of the paint I'm using is the Folk Art Color Shift Acrylic Green Flash Paint, mixing that with Sap Green Reno Art Acrylic Paint. And I'm just doing a thick coat of paint on a very hard bristled wall painting brush, and I'm basically stippling the paint all over. I did it this way because I really wanted to accentuate all of the texture of the piece, but I also needed it to be a green dragon.
Once I'm done with my big brush, I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush and do some detail painting with the green, just making sure that I get all the spots that I wanted painted green, but were a bit hard to reach with that large brush. And again, here's the green flash, but I'm actually gonna mix it with a little bit of a neon yellow. This will give me a really light color that I can use for certain detail areas that I just wanted to give a bit more pop. Playing with another color shift folk art color is my plum flash. I'm using that to paint those little pox scales that I added and I'm gonna do the base of the horn and then do a bit later I decide that I want the horns themselves to be this purple but I didn't want them to be straight really vibrant of this purple so I'm just gonna do a bit of a dry brush of the horns. I was kind of torn between leaving them black and painting them because I thought they looked kind of cool but they blended it a bit too much with the the black base if I had left them black so that was what made me ultimately decide to paint them. I'm also doing a bit of detail painting of black around the eyes. I'm going to move into doing a black wash. I'm going to do this pretty fast with a black acrylic mixed with lots of water in a very soft brush and I'm just covering the entire thing in this. I'm trying to get it so that the black wash seeps into the recesses and again just really accentuates the detail. I am also using a dry paper towel as I go to blot off the raised areas or areas that would be closer to the light that I want to keep cleaner looking. Here I am just doing that quick dry brush with the plum flash to give the horns a little bit of color. Unfortunately I lost the footage, but I did also add a resin coat to the mouth. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this awesome piece. If you'd like to see more of me making my art, please like, follow, and subscribe.